Hi, Lewis K. Hill here for Gink and Gasoline. Today I'm going to show you how to tie one of my bonefish patterns. This is my glass shrimp. Um, these glass shrimp are really cool little shrimp. They're transparent. You can see right through their bodies. They're all over the flats down in the Bahamas. I caught one one day and had a chance to get a good look at it, so I designed this fly to imitate that shrimp. And it's proven to be a really great fly for me on days when bonefish are really spooky. So I'm tying on a Gamagatsu number SL11 um, 3H hook in a size 8. That's about as small as I go on a bonefish fly. Um, and I'm tying in a little bit of Wapsie Flash and Slinky, which is a kind of a, um, a yarn product with a, uh, with a built-in flash in it. Um, great looking stuff in the water, just the right amount of flash to it. And I'm uh, wrapping over it with a little um, Danville flat waxed um, thread in a light pink. So I'll pull this back and I'm going to trim that material so that the fibers are not all the same length so it gives me a natural looking tail. And then I will bring my thread forward all the way to the front of the hook using just enough to kind of cover that material and give me that pink color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip finish and I'm going to cut that thread off because we have some more materials we're going to put over the shank of the hook. So the next step is I have this little piece of um, braided mylar tubing just uh, longer than the hook shank and it's hollow on the inside so I can press it over the hook like so and then this is kind of the tricky part you have to hold that tube and the thread together pull it back to where you want it and then just take a couple of wraps over it to secure it down usually um, learning to tie the fly it takes you a couple of times of doing that to really get the hang of it but it's it's a pretty easy skill to master once that's tied in I'm going to take my tweezers uh, you can use a bodkin or a, um, a needle for this I like the tweezers um, and I'm going to pick apart this mylar tube and fray it at the ends just work it apart and what that does is it gives me a nice flared body and it lets the fibers of this mylar tubing um, kind of flare out and get all uh, curvy and crinkly and uh, they catch the light really nice and it gives a natural a nice natural shape body and it um, does a pretty good job of imitating that translucent body of the glass shrimp. Then what I like to do once I've gotten to that point is to take a little brushable super glue and coat that mylar tube and my thread so that nothing comes unraveled further than I have unraveled it. Now at this point it is in your best interest to let that sit for a few minutes, um, let that glue set before you get your hands back in there and start tying again. Once your super glue is set it's time to tie in the bead chain eyes. I use a pair of small black bead chain eyes on this fly. I like the contrast um, and they give me just enough weight. It's impossible to overstate the importance of having the right amount of weight on bonefish flies. I fish this fly in shallow water um, and these uh, dumbbell eyes, I mean these uh, bead chain eyes give me just the amount, right amount of weight, not too much to get the fly down in the bottom. At this point I'm going to roll the fly over and I'm going to add a wing of white craft fur. Um, I'll take this and clean out the under fur to make a nice slim wing profile that will lock in really good. Once that's done, I'm going to trim the ends nice and straight. And then I will catch these in on top of the hook with a couple of loose wraps. And just pull them back until, they, until the ends clear the eye of the hook. And then I'll secure them. There we go. Didn't wait quite long enough for my super glues. You can see that sticking to my hands. Um, then I'm going to add just a couple of strands of Mother of Pearl Flash. Again, keeping the uh, color in this fly pretty neutral. There we go. Pull that back over the wing and tie them down. 
Then I'll gather all that up and I'll cut across these at an angle so that the fibers are not all the same length. Give it a nice natural look. Now I'm going to add a pair of black and white barred rubber legs. Um, which again gives the fly just a little bit of contrast without adding color to it. And then I will build up that light pink head. This pink thread has got just a little bit of a shine to it and it's perfect through that mylar um, for looking like the uh, the inside of the shrimp. So then we will give it a little quick whip finish and snip that off, clean up our little straggling ends here and I will finish the head of the fly with a little bit of brushable super glue just to make it durable. And there you have it, the glass shrimp. Um, this is a great fly when bonefish are being picky. If they're spooking um, at your presentation or if they're following your fly and not eating it, um, they generally will pounce right on this fly. It looks very much like the, uh, the natural glass shrimp that they see all over the flats. It's always done really well for me, so tie you some up, get down to the islands, catch some bonefish. Thanks for tuning in to Gink and Gasoline.